Well, here I am. This is where I am today. I am a proud Narendri woman, and I'm proud that I have experienced life, good, bad, and the ugly. But I tell you what, I've enjoyed every, every moment, sad or not, I'm very happy that I have uh, achieved and been an achiever to get where I am today. And I, I'm so proud of uh, people who have stood by me and showed me the way. And that's who I am today. I am the Adelaide Jewel. I was born uh, in 1951 in the Rakan Community Hospital. When was the last time you went back there? Yeah? When I went back to the country is when, um, I think uh, last year, and I get a sense of belonging, the, the feeling that comes over me when I know that I'm home where I was born. I was 18 when I got married. I got married in St. John's Church in Adelaide in the city, and I married Brian Jenkins. I had three children, Tracy, Darren, and Adam. I said when I walked out of the church, I wished I never got married, and then I got rice thrown in my face, and that made me even more wilder. I tell you what, it didn't work out. Well, after my marriage broke down, I went to my local pubs drinking and drinking and drinking until I would. I think that's probably what contributed to the friggin' heart attack. I think the drinking, it was, it, it was getting, it was taking a hold on me. And then I couldn't stop for quite a while. So it was, it was getting to that point where I was just going, it was just too much. The, the mutton was probably getting, uh, it was wanting to kill me. I felt I was having a nervous breakdown. Well, I was told that I died three times on the table uh, in the hospital, but I don't remember that, what people, you know, I only just remember what was told to me. So I was practically ready for the grave, I guess. I nearly, I nearly had them taken away, I reckon, because family was threatening somehow. If I didn't pull my weight, didn't, if I didn't pull myself together, I reckon they would have. I reckon the welfare would have taken my kids. But you know what, this most selfish thing was not doing anything right for my kids. And I didn't want to do that. <laughs> I had no help. But you know what, it was those kids that got me up, those kids. And I felt strong. And then I started realizing what a stupid woman. But it didn't stop me though. When they got me out, I was right. And I knew straight away, what the F are you doing to yourself? And that's when I realized I had to do something about myself. And it was me that put myself together. Because I had no one behind me, in front of me, to talk to. That is those, it was the three kids. They were the good, the bad, and the ugly for me. But things came good, because I'm a survivor. That's me. I turned my, my life around through education because education, you need to be focused. You need to show that you, you can do it. And then people will appreciate your, that you're trying and you're doing something for yourself. That's, that's the most important thing. Starting back from TAFE College, I graduated at Port Adelaide TAFE for the ever. I've never graduated in my life like that, ever. Then I went to uh, Townley College in 91, uh, 92. At Townley College, I decided to get myself re-educated. And I never thought I would say that word, re-educate, but um, I decided to go, and God behold, there was all my cousins 
and then 1993, that's when I joined, uh, when I was able to join the cultural agency, which was uh, something that uh, opened my heart out. And there it was, looking at me in the face, culture. The weaving and the jewellery actually started on a, on, a, on a Wednesday where we was able to do some uh, jewellery uh, and learn how to make it by this non-Aboriginal woman who uh, was one of the uh, lecturers down at Townley. I learned a lot from that woman, even though she didn't say anything much. She did the, she did the connection with us, but she never told them what, it, what the connections were, what they were called, and she did all of joining herself instead of telling us how to do it. I watched and observed what she done, and I knew I can do that, but I need to know what they are called. So I did my own research. In uh, collaboration with uh, the Adelaide Botanic Gardens and Townley College, us as the uh, tour guides, uh, we did the, the fortnightly tours here. And I was just one of the guides that uh, did some of the tours uh, for the international, in interstate and local uh, people, especially schools and uh, university people that I, I took around during those earlier years. And I did enjoy it when I was able to, uh, you know, talk about our, um, the plants that, uh, that is indigenous to uh, our country. So this is what, what uh, I've been doing back then in 1993. I'm glad that I have done these tours back then and um, it's good to be back here and see how much growth and uh, change in this gardens, in the Botanic Gardens in Adelaide. I just love it. I mean, I used to get rides in here. No, you still can. Yeah. <laughs> Back in 2000, I was asked at Townley College, now I was having, we was having a 10.30 morning break and I was approached by the, uh, uh, one of the uh, teachers who used to work in the uh, art course or did the art course uh, and he asked me if I would uh, weave a mat, uh, a woven mat in the Narunjiri way. Well anyways at that time I, uh, I wasn't quite sure about that but then uh, I uh, had to make one like a small dinner plate. We have that form of technology that is actually embedded now and that's going to be my legacy on what I have done in 2000. Getting a job at the South Australian Museum was my highlight in, uh, for year 2000. My role in the South Australian Aboriginal Cultures Gallery was a tour guide. When you first walk into the South Australian Museum is our Aboriginal technology around Australia and that it's the diversity of the technology. I enjoyed the experience, I've enjoyed uh, talking about the, uh, the diversity of the exhibitions that we have here in, uh, in the Cultural Gallery. Um, I've met many people from interstate, local and uh, overseas. It was just an amazing time for me Everyone got to uh, ask questions about what exhibitions that they liked and what they have seen. I've met so many people, so it was an exciting time for me, which I enjoyed. To make my Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island fans, I purchased materials from Port Adelaide News Agency. Philip is always helpful. We met Daphne Gollan probably about 12 years ago. We go back quite a long way. She's a lovely person, uh, lots of character. We, you know, we introduced her to lots of the products that we had here which suited her business and her craft work. Uh, and so we've done a lot of work together over those years. I take pride in the, our flag colours. And uh, since our community really didn't have much jewellery to wear, on our uh, uh, NAIDOC week, survival day, reconciliation, there was nothing to show black, yellow and red. So I decided to, okay, I'm going to experiment and start doing some uh, jewellery and see what people like. So I started off with bracelets. I, I learnt later properly how to do uh, the necklaces. 
Hi, ladies. I'm back and I'm black and that's that. <laughs> How are you? Need for beads play an important role in my jewelry making process. I source the majority of beads from here and the ladies guided their way to order in my different types of colored beads. All right, sweetie. Yeah, thank Have you, dear. We'll do this. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, birdies. She's a jewel of the community. She's uh, a jewel in herself, and she makes jewellery. I mean, <laughs> how, good, how good can you get? I worked with the Adelaide Crows with uh, Andrew McLeod. Uh, I did some uh, helping them to show how to make some jewellery uh, for the youth. And Andrew was a lovely young fella to uh, work with. I, I had, uh, you know, some good uh, times with uh, that fella working uh, with him and the youth. You appeared in Bette Cole's Here I Am, and you were superb in it. My line was... Karen, this is Honey Steph, our Munger elder. Hello, dear. Hello. All right, ladies. <laughs> I thought, hello, dear. They do everything possible to uh, make people feel good to celebrate our survival day here in South Australia. Nutkin, <laughs> we both win our survival t-shirts. There you go. This is my big deadly trolley. All my jewelry in. <laughs> Survival Day is one of the biggest events on the Aboriginal calendar in South Australia and I am grateful that I'm able to attend and showcase my deadly jewellery that I've been preparing for over three months. Oh, lovely! Oh, oh thank you. Look at these. I got the rushes. Oh, for my weaving. I'm going to weave a ring out of this. Hello! Hello! Hi, everyone. As a little girl growing up on the Rauken community, I never thought that one day I would have the opportunity to make jewellery that brings together Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal peoples. I am a proud Nurundu woman that's overcome many hurdles in my life to finally become a well-respected elder in the Aboriginal community. It's been a corker, corker day. I am so happy in everything I did. Yeah, How do you around. feel now? I feel ripped. <laughs> my finningy is knocked in and I'm going to knock myself out tonight. <laughs> All right, get out of my face now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, yeah, done. Yeah. I'm done. I'm <laughs> done. <laughs> I live for my culture. I live for what I can do for the community. I can do anything to help with any special events. I've been invited to many uh, special events throughout the times that I have worked hard to uh, be creative, to be artistic in my jewelry making, to uh, you know help. That's something that I'll, I'll always uh, enjoy doing for them until I can not do any more, I guess. <laughs>